Artificial intelligence has made remarkable progress in recent months, and in my opinion, it's been fascinating to witness the rapid evolution of AI assistants. Last year, the undisputed champion in the AI chatbot arena was ChatGPT. Its dominance was similar to watching a prime Mike Tyson. Nobody else came close. However, the landscape has changed, and we now have exciting newcomers eyeing for the title of the best AI chatbot. The newcomers we will be discussing today are Bard and Bing Chat. Maybe you've heard of them, maybe this is completely new to you. But one thing that can't be ignored is the fact that this is not a one horse race anymore. So today, we are going to compare all three of them. We will talk about the respective user interfaces, their capabilities, their flaws, and we will even put them to the test using three prompts scaling up in difficulty with the end goal of crowning one champion in the battle for AI supremacy. Why wait any longer? Let's get into it. Before we dive into the details, let's start with a very quick summary of each AI chatbot for those who may need to become more familiar with them. If you already have a good understanding of them, please feel free to skip ahead using the timestamps below. First up, we have ChatGPT. ChatGPT is a large language model created by OpenAI a research corporation that focuses on advancing artificial intelligence in a way that will benefit the human race. Like any chatbot, the model has been trained on massive amounts of text data and can generate human-like responses. The latest GPT release was GPT-4, which became available to the public for PLUS members in March of 2023. ChatGPT is available in 50 countries worldwide and supports more than 50 languages at the time of recording. Next, we have Bard. Bard was created by Google's AI team and was first released in March of 2023. At the time of recording, Bard is currently available in three languages which include English, Japanese, and Korean. And you now have the ability to access it in over 180 countries and territories. Bard is very new to the game and is still under development, so you can expect to see new versions of this chatbot coming in the near future. Lastly, we have Bing Chat. Bing Chat was created by Microsoft and was made available to the public in early May of this year. It uses OpenAI's GPT-4 as its powering model, but it has been customized for search. We will go into that more later on in the video. Bing Chat is currently available in 169 countries all around the world and supports over 100 languages as well. Before continuing on, I want to introduce you to this new yearly survey we are doing. ZTM's inaugural AI Tools Plus Coding Survey. The goal of this survey is to see how programmers are actually using AI and how it evolves in the coming year. We'll also be sharing the results with the community so you can see which tools other developers are using, how they're using them, and see if it's even worth your time. This data doesn't currently exist, it's all news headlines and one-off stories. This is why we are excited to see the responses we get and to ultimately share them with you. If that isn't enough, we're also giving out free ZTM memberships and swag for some lucky people who fill it out. It's 5 minutes of your time and you'll get to be part of creating this first data set of its kind. You can find the survey in the description below. Okay, back to the battle of large language models. So now that we have some high level overviews of these different large language models, let's go over each of their user interfaces and compare their similarities and differences. To start, we will look at ChatGPT's UI first. In my opinion, I do think this is on the simple side, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It just screams minimalistic to me. You have the typical elements that you would expect to see, like a user input box, an output box, a send button, a regenerate response button, a new chat button, and some kind of response grading system, which is typically just a thumbs up or a thumbs down to grade the AI's response. In this case, you have that, as well as a copy text button, which definitely comes in handy. One thing I do appreciate about ChatGPT's UI is the chat history that you can find on the left side. ChatGPT will automatically assign a name to the chat which is related to the prompts that you asked it, but you do have the capability of renaming it to whatever you would like, which makes it very clear and simple to find old chats that you may have started a while ago. Besides that, you have the option to toggle the chat from light to dark mode, but that's about it when it comes to customization. Next up, let's talk about Bard's UI. Similar to ChatGPT, Bard has the typical elements that you would expect to see, like a user input box, an output box, a send button, and some kind of response grading system. But there are a lot of differences as well. For example, at the time of recording, you can't have multiple chats in Bard, at least not the way you would think. You have a single chat window where the conversation happens, and that's it. This also makes it harder to find older chats as well, because you have to click on an activity button where a second window will open up to find previous chats, instead of just displaying them on the same screen like ChatGPT does. Not all differences are bad though, some things I really do love about Bard's UI are the export button and the Google search button, which definitely comes in handy when you are looking to fact check the chatbot. And it's definitely a point over ChatGPT, because at the current moment, ChatGPT is not able to browse the internet or provide any 
any real-time data for that matter. But it is worth noting that that feature is in beta mode for Plus members and will probably be accessible to everyone very soon. Bard also has the capability to cite its sources when available, because like we've mentioned before, these chatbots can be wrong, so it's always vital to verify the information. Another huge difference in Bard's UI is how it displays multiple drafts of the language model's output, which ultimately gives you more options to choose from to answer your prompt. And finally, when it comes to customization, ChatGPT and Bard are a lot alike, with only the light and dark modes to show for. And last but not least, we have Bing Chat. To start, you are presented with three different conversation styles that can affect the response you get from the model. These options are creative, balanced, and precise. Creative offers you a more expressive and entertaining conversation, and in this mode, the chatbot is able to create images for you as well, using DALI, which happens to be another OpenAI product. And the funny thing is that ChatGPT can't even do this yet. Precise is exactly as it sounds, a mode where the chatbot tries to be as factual as possible. This setting is perfect if you need to get the most accurate responses from the model, and balanced is a mix of the two, where the chatbot focuses on being informative and engaging at the same time. Outside of these conversation styles, Bing Chat also has a maximum of 20 queries per chat. This can be extremely irritating if you are deep into a conversation and have to restart the chat just to get an answer from the model but there is no way around it at the moment. Similar to Bard, Bing Chat also has the capability to browse the internet and provide you with real-time data. And Bing Chat also cites its sources. In fact, from my personal experience, this chatbot is the most consistent when it comes to citing and outperforms the rest. It also stores your previous conversations on the right side of the screen and is very similar to ChatGPT in the way it looks and feels. The only difference is that one is on the left side and the other is on the right side. Outside of that, Bing Chat isn't all that impressive when it comes to customization. The chat color does change depending on the conversation style that you're in, but there is no dark mode at the current moment, which is definitely a miss for me. Now, before wrapping this video up, we have to put all three chatbots to the test. I mean, this is a battle, it's only right. We have created three prompts that level up in difficulty from easy to medium to difficult. We will be asking each chatbot the same question and comparing the results we get. Our first prompt, also known as the beginner prompt, goes as follows. As you can see, I've gained weight with all my recent vacations and I need to get it together before summer starts, so I'm hoping these chatbots can help me out. We will start with ChatGPT first. It's also worth noting that I will be using ChatGPT Plus to access the latest and greatest version of the model, GPT-4. Okay, let's see what we get. As you can see, the output is not bad for such a simple prompt. You have different protein options throughout the day, healthy fats, vitamin sources, and plenty of nature's candy. I even like how the chatbot reminds you to drink plenty of water throughout the day, which is vital in any meal plan. But the best part, in my opinion, is how it states that if you have any dietary needs or goals, you may need a more personalized plan, which definitely is true. Overall, I would give this response a 6 out of 10. It has great food sources, but doesn't mention anything about portions, which is vital for any diet. Next up, let's see what Bard recommends. Bard has a very similar response. It recommends the same food groups as ChatTPT did. We have yogurt, fish, whole wheat bread, and so on. The problem is that, similar to ChatGPT, Bard doesn't provide portion sizes or comments on calorie intake for that matter. One thing I do like is the tips that they mention at the bottom to sustain a healthy diet. Overall, I would say they are pretty solid. And it's also nice that they mention a few substitutions that you can make if you are a vegetarian. With all that being said, I would give Bard's output a 6.5 out of 10. It's good, but there is room for improvement. Lastly, let's look at what Bing Chat has to say. I will also be keeping the conversation mode in balance for these prompts, just because it's the perfect middle ground between the other two options. No surprise here, Bing Chat offers a lot of the same food suggestions. You have yogurt, fruit, veggies, nuts, and so on. I am very impressed that this chatbot gives portion size recommendations, which is something that we have not seen yet. And overall, there's a good balance between the meals with plenty of different healthy options. So for all that, I would give Bing Chat a 7 out of 10. This means the winner of round 1 goes to Bing Chat, with the highest rating out of the 3 which was a 7 out of 10. Now let's move on to round 2 which is an intermediate prompt. This prompt looks like this. As you can see, it's much more elaborate and includes many more details like dietary preferences and restrictions. We also went ahead and added a calorie intake goal with a certain amount of that coming from protein, in this case, a minimum of 120 grams. But my favorite part of this prompt is that we are asking for ingredients and recipes for each meal because I need things to be as simple as possible in the kitchen. Alright, with all that said, let's start with ChatGPT. 
Well, no surprise here, with a much better prompt, we get a much better output. But all in all, this response is great. It breaks down every meal for me and even puts the calorie and protein intake before moving on to the next meal. It gives me a list of ingredients and cooking recipes for each meal as well, which makes my life a lot easier. And I also appreciate the fact that it followed my dietary preferences and restrictions. The calories do look to be correct at 2,500 calories in total, and it even exceeds my protein requirement by about 100 grams, which I'm definitely not mad about. Overall, I would give this response an 8 out of 10. It's a very great response, but I think there could have been more creativity in the actual meals. Just because I prefer chicken doesn't mean I want chicken every single meal. Next up, we have Bard. Right off the bat, what I noticed with this chatbot's response is that it took a couple of shortcuts. The instructions for each meal are extremely simple and not in a good way. The lunch recipe does not even include how to cook the beans or make salsa for that matter. I also don't like how it does not provide a recipe name for each dish and just gives you generic weirdly put together meals. Unlike ChatGPT, Bard doesn't provide calories and protein intake per ingredient and just gives me a summed up total of what it thinks it will be. In this case, it's saying that the meal plan is 2,490 calories and 120 grams of protein, and I guess we just have to trust it. Overall, I would give this response a 6 out of 10. It just doesn't come close to ChatGPT, in my opinion. And lastly, we have Bing Chat. Where do I even start with this? Right away, the problem that I noticed with this chatbot is the fact that it gave us the exact meals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And that's just not gonna work. Who wants Brussels sprouts for breakfast? I will say that the instructions are far superior to the other two chatbots, but again, because all the meals are the exact same, that is not as impressive. Lastly, Bing Chat just gives us a summed up total of what it thinks the calorie and protein intake are and does not itemize every ingredient like ChatGPT did. Overall, I would give this response a 4 out of 10. It just was not good. This means the winner of round 2 easily goes to ChatGPT with the highest rating out of the 3, which was an 8 out of 10. Now let's move on to round 3, which is an advanced prompt. This prompt looks something like this. As you can see, things have definitely leveled up. Everything we had in round 2 is just step 1 of our new prompt. Besides that, we are looking for our chatbots to create a table and organize it accordingly, and also create an Instacart shopping list containing the ingredients needed. Unfortunately, only ChatGPT has access to plugins, so for those that don't, we will take a shopping list as a replacement, and that will not deduct from their final score. One thing to remember as well is that ChatGPT plugins are still in their infancy, and no doubt Bard and Bing Chat will eventually adopt them as well. It's just a matter of time. Anyways, let's get started with ChatGPT. As you can see, ChatGPT GPT followed the prompt to a T. We have 2,500 total calories and exactly 120 grams of protein. The chatbot also provided the ingredients needed as well as a recipe to complete each meal. When it comes to the output format, it also passed with flying colors and everything looks the way it's supposed to. Lastly, ChatGPT had no problem at all with the Instacart shopping tasks, so for that, I'm very impressed. Overall, I would give this response a 10 out of 10. It had everything I was looking for and it was done smoothly and efficiently. Next, let's see how Bard handles this task. I honestly don't know where to start. Bard gave me a meal plan, but that's about all it did because everything else is incorrect. The plan consists of 1300 calories and 80 grams of protein, which is far off from the original ask of 2500 calories and a minimum of 120 grams of protein. Unfortunately, the table is also incorrect. We asked Bard to place the meal titles on the top and place all the other things like ingredients, nutrition, and recipes on the left hand side and it decided to ignore me and do the opposite. On the bright side, the model was able to create a shopping list of ingredients that look to be correct, and the meals themselves have some kind of variety between them, and they're not all the same, which is great. Overall, I would give this response a 3 out of 10. No more really needs to be said. Last but not least, let's see how Bing Chat responds. Well, let's just say I expected more. Bing Chat only provided a meal that includes 1,500 calories. This is far off from my 2,500 calorie ask, but I will give it credit for hitting the protein requirement of 120 grams exactly. I also appreciate the fact that it was able to organize the table correctly and even cited its sources. Besides that, it was able to create a shopping list and offered some variety within the different meals as well. Overall, I would give this response a 5 out of 10. I really wish it hit my calorie intake goal. This means the winner of round 3 easily goes to ChatGPT with the perfect score of 10 out of 10. Well there you have it. All in all, I was pretty surprised with some of the results that we received. I also want to make it clear that the chatbot's responses vary. 
I'm certain that if I were to type in these prompts again, not one of them would give me the exact output I received earlier. It's important to remember that we are still in the early stages of these AI chatbots and AI technology as a whole. And in the coming weeks, months, years, we will certainly see massive improvements made to each one of these models. Now you're probably wondering who I think won the battle for AI supremacy. Find out next week only on Zero to Mastery. Okay, okay, that was a joke. The clear winner was ChatGPT. When it comes to the actual responses given, the others just don't come close at the moment. That does not mean it can't change, but I think our prompts made it pretty clear who was leaps ahead. If you found this video helpful, we would love if you'd hit that like button to show your support. Even better if you leave a comment. Do you agree with our crowning? Which large language model is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, and happy chatting!